something's hiding. It's an octopus. It was camouflaging itself and blending into the surroundings. Octopuses are excellent hunters that have survived in nature using a variety of techniques, having acquired their strange bodies through long evolution. They are so intelligent that they are even referred to as the sea's primates. Octopuses are smart? I've never heard of that. All right. This time, let's learn together about the strange ecology of the octopus. Very long academy. Here's the overall structure for this time. Let's unravel the ecology of the octopus together. Shall we start by explaining about the evolution of the octopus? I'm counting on you. Let's see how it acquired that unique, strange body and what kind of creature its ancestor was in the first place. The only ones with such weird bodies are octopuses and squids, right? They do have a quite unique form. About 510 million years ago, a relative of the octopus's ancestor, the Nautilus, appeared. The Nautilus is one of the living fossils, a creature with a body like a squid inside a spiral shell. Nautilus, you say? It's still living on Earth. Its spiral shell is characteristic, isn't it? That's correct. However, even back then, they had shells, but they were not spirally like a nautilus, but more of a triangular hat shape. Over the course of 35 million years, variations started to emerge in the shells, each with its unique characteristics. Particularly, there were many that had long, straight shells and they flourished for about 45 million years. Humans have only been around for about 300,000 years. Compared to that, 45 million years of thriving is an incredibly long time. However, despite their prosperity, I don't think I've ever seen such a creature before. Unfortunately, they gradually declined after thriving for 45 million years and went extinct around 210 million years ago. However, from there, the ancestors of ammonites and octopuses and squids were born, and they further split into several species. So, the octopuses and squids that are alive today are their descendants, right? What did they originally look like? You can still see something similar today. That's the Vampyrotuthis. The Vampyrotuthis, which has a fossil record dating back 86 million years, is said to be a common ancestor of squids and octopuses before they diverged in their evolutionary paths. It has eight legs like an octopus, but its body is oddly orange, and it has two long, thread-like organs. Squids also have two long tentacles, right? Are the ones extending from the Vampyrotuthis equivalent to the long tentacles of squids? That's right. They have them because they share a common ancestor. However, their body length is only about 10 centimeters, so they are very small. They are currently distributed from tropical to temperate waters at depths of 600 to 1,000 meters, so there aren't many opportunities to see them. I'd love to meet one in person. It's amazing that they're still surviving on Earth. Yes, they are creatures that have been reproducing on Earth for more than 100 million years. The reason why the Vampyrotuthis changed its body shape and evolved is because it changed from a lifestyle of sticking to the seafloor or rocks to a swimming lifestyle. Having a shell makes it heavy and unable to swim for long, and if it stops moving, it sinks to the seafloor. It could get eaten by predators while it's sinking to the seafloor. The ancestors of octopuses began to use their shells as floats to gain buoyancy and float in the sea, even when resting. They created partitions in their elongated shells and filled them with gas to help them float in the sea. Oh, so by turning their shells into flotation devices, they were able to swim easily. The Nautilus also fills its shell with gas to float. Yes, it's the same principle, but that's not all. The ancestors of octopuses further evolved to swim more freely, making their shells smaller and smaller. The shell was eventually enveloped inside the body and disappeared. They went that far. What do they do to protect themselves from predators? Don't worry, it's okay. Even though the lifestyle of octopuses has drastically changed, they have acquired a special ability. That's camouflage. They blend into their surroundings by hiding at the bottom of the sea, becoming invisible hunters who target their prey while hiding from predators. 
I see. So they are excellent hunters who hide and hunt. At first, they swam in the sea. But in the process of evolution, they developed the ability to hide rather than swim. It's a perfect skill for both offense and defense. Camouflage can mimic not only color but also shape. Among them, the mimic octopus is considered a master of camouflage. Mimic octopus. While regular octopuses can mimic colors similar to their surroundings or landscape, the mimic octopus can mimic other creatures. Other creatures. Like imitating dangerous fish in the sea, you're observant. It can mimic about ten different creatures, including venomous ones like the stonefish, flounder, and sea snakes. Its variations and ability to replicate are so high that you might not even realize it's an octopus at first glance. Wow! If it's that similar, predators would be too scared to approach the octopus. Even humans would hesitate, thinking they might become prey to the venom. Exactly. Not only is its ability to change shape impressive, but its ability to replicate colors is even more remarkable. It can completely blend in with the surrounding scenery, making it quite difficult to find an octopus relying on visual cues alone. Speaking of mimicry, how does it change its color? It changes color by intricately moving its cells. While octopuses are known to have excellent vision, it's believed they can't actually distinguish colors. So, how do they judge color and shape? They do it based on the differences in brightness of colors. So, based on the brightness of the colors they see, they change their body's color and shape. That's amazing. Exactly. Now, as for how they change their body color, octopuses have cells related to color change. Each arm of an octopus is filled with 50 million nerves, and by moving muscles in various directions, they can contract or relax these cells to change their body color. I see. They create so many color variations by moving cells. Moreover, this is a three-layer structure. The top layer reflects black, red, and yellow. The second layer reflects specific wavelengths of light. And the third layer reflects all light to create white. By combining these roles, it can express countless colors and blend into any background. It's truly a miraculous ability. Wow! I had no idea they were making such intricate movements. When they change color, they tighten or loosen cells in the muscles under their skin. They then relax the surface of their skin to create wrinkles and contract or twist it to create irregularities, mimicking color and shape. Octopuses are indeed brown, aren't they? So they're delicately moving their muscles to change color. By the way, their heart is also deeply involved in this color change, because they move their muscles intensely. They consume a huge amount of oxygen, and that's why the octopus's heart is special. Special. Don't tell me they have multiple hearts. You've noticed a good point. That's exactly right. Octopuses have three hearts. Really? Octopuses are amazing. There is a good reason for this. Have you ever seen an octopus escape at high speed? They spit out ink and swim away at an incredible speed, and the secret to their speed lies in their heart. I've seen scenes like that in videos, but what does that have to do with the octopus's heart? The thing is, octopuses don't have bones, and most of their body is made up of muscles. When they swim at high speed, they need a lot of oxygen to move their muscles. So octopuses use their three hearts to distribute oxygen throughout their bodies. I see. They need oxygen to move their muscles, and they have three hearts to transport it. Ah, each heart has its own role. One could be called the main heart. It sends blood and oxygen throughout the body, just like a human heart. The other two are located in the left and right gills, and their role is to send blood to the gills and oxygen to the muscles. So, just like changing colors, these roles are also divided. Then, how is this related to mimicry? Actually, as I mentioned earlier, to use the ability of mimicry, you need to move all the muscles in your body and contract or relax your cells, which requires a large amount of oxygen. Therefore, with three hearts, they can circulate enough oxygen throughout the body, which enables complex mimicry. So the supply of oxygen through the heart allows for cell changes. Octopuses are smart. 
Indeed, octopuses have nine brains, so they are quite intelligent. They use tools, have memory, and their cognitive abilities are quite advanced. Wait a minute, nine brains? Wouldn't that tangle up the tentacles? On the contrary, having nine brain allows them to move their tentacles accurately. You may have guessed from the number nine, but in addition to the main brain, each of the eight legs of the octopus also has a brain. The brains and the legs are clusters of motor centers located at the base of each leg. But they are incredibly small, just a cluster of nerves. I see, but why are brains in the legs? It seems like one main brain should be enough. That's not the case. The brain in the body gives orders to the brains in each leg. Then, each leg performs subsequent movements and judgments, carrying out a splendid division of labor. I see. So because one brain in the body can't handle such complex tasks, there are brains in the legs as well. That's right. By the way, octopuses are the most intelligent among invertebrates, or animals, without a backbone. Intelligence is associated with the number of neurons in the brain. In other words, the more neurons, the greater the ability to process information from the outside world. It's said that humans have about 160 billion neurons. In contrast, octopuses have about 500 million, which is roughly the same as dogs. They're that smart. They're so small, but they have 500 million nerve cells packed in. Thanks to that. Octopuses with high intelligence can take extraordinary actions. For instance, octopuses use tools to protect themselves. They hide in the shadows of shells or coconut shells to protect themselves from enemies. Isn't it just that those were just conveniently located near the octopus? No, they are definitely using them as tools. Sometimes they even carry these tools while moving, so they're more like shields for protection rather than just accidental hiding places. The sight of an octopus walking on the seafloor, clutching a coconut shell under each arm, is quite adorable. Oh, that does sound like they're using it as a tool. Moving around while holding a coconut is quite skillful. Moreover, octopuses use tools in a rather unique way. When we think of using tools, it's famous that monkeys use branches or stones to get food, but it's quite rare for animals to use tools as armor. There are cases where hermit crabs use other creatures like sea anemones to protect themselves from octopuses, but using tools has hardly been confirmed. Indeed, when it comes to self-protection, I often hear about poison or thorns, but I don't know of any creatures other than humans that use tools. Exactly. There are still many more extraordinary behaviors of octopuses. They have mirror image recognition brain power What's mirror image recognition? Octopuses can recognize their own reflection in a mirror. They're incredibly intelligent creatures. Apart from octopuses, it's believed that elephants and dolphins also have the ability to recognize their mirror image. Interestingly, dogs don't have this ability. It's amazing that they can recognize their own reflection. They seem smarter than dogs. It's not fair to simply compare the intelligence of an invertebrate like an octopus with a vertebrate like a dog, but it's true that octopuses are smart. Another interesting thing about them is that they take care of their offspring. Female octopuses continuously guard their eggs in their den until they hatch. For cold water octopuses like the giant Pacific octopus, the developmental period can last from six to 10 months because the eggs develop slowly. They take care of their young for such a long time? That must be hard, taking care of their babies and themselves. Actually, the females don't take care of themselves at all. During the parenting period, they don't eat anything and continuously embrace their eggs. They stroke the eggs and clean away any dirt or mold, and they squirt water to refresh the stagnant water around the eggs. Female octopuses are really kind. Don't the males help with parenting in any way? Most males die after mating. Therefore, the females are the ones who take care of the offspring. Once the babies safely hatch, the females, having fulfilled their roles and with no strength left to swim, quietly pass away. Oh no, that's so sad. Very long academy. So, we learned about the strange lifestyle of octopuses together this time. How was it? 
Their lifestyle is beyond imagination. It was fun, unraveling the mysteries of their strange bodies acquired through the history of evolution. Because they've shed their shells, they've gained the ability to camouflage themselves in their surroundings and a body that's both nimble and robust. This is an ability that, even on the vast expanse of Earth, only octopuses possess. On this channel, we plan to introduce content related to science like this, so if you find it interesting, make sure to check out our other videos. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. We'd love to see people who love creatures enjoying themselves in the comments section. See you in another video. Bye. Bye.